For 300 years, the most powerful nations on earth grew richer and stronger on the profits of the slave trade. Over 12 million men, women and children were forcibly transported from Africa on slave ships like this to the colonies and plantations in North and South America. Today, slavery is illegal in every country on the planet. But the truth is slavery did not die in the 19th century. It is alive, it is thriving, and it is bigger than ever. Legat de pat, i-am zis că nu, 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 nu. M-a legat de pat, mi-a legat mâinile și picioarele, m-a zbrăcat și mi-a spus că asta eu am plătit bani, precum că îți fac viza, că eu am plătit în pașaport să pun viza. This is the story of a trade in human flesh. A global trafficking industry that ruins the lives of millions of young women every day of every year. Around the world, our best estimate is 27 million people in slavery. Globally, six or eight percent is my guess, sex trafficking. But it's also the story of two European cities, more than a thousand kilometers apart, and at opposite ends of the worldwide chain of sex slavery. Today, the trail of trafficked women most often ends in the rich and liberal countries of Western Europe, but it begins in the poor and underdeveloped former Soviet bloc nations, and one country in particular, the Republic of Moldova. Chisinau is the capital of Moldova, the poorest country in Europe, where many young Moldovans are often forced to go abroad in order just to survive. And it's this desperation which has meant that so many young Moldovan women are often duped into the sex trafficking industry. We in the Republic of Moldova what we have. It's a country of origin, a potential of victims of human rights. For Ion Vizdoga, a lawyer who has represented more than 700 victims of sex trafficking, the story starts and ends with poverty. A funcționar primește circa 100, 150 de euro și în asemenea situații toți vor să plece în străinătate pentru a-și găsi un salariu cât și de cât decent. De ce acest fenomen? Adică de sărăcie din Moldova și viața normală din străinătate se folosesc doar traficanții. Outside Chișinău, the reality of that poverty is stark. Moldova is still a country largely reliant on subsistence farming. We're heading for the small southern town of Kaușeni. We're going to meet a young woman who escaped from international sex slavery just a few weeks ago. I'm Dorina, I'm from the Moldova, and I'm 20 years old. I'm going to meet with a boy, this boy, who asked me to do something. He asked me to do something. Dacă vrei să lucrezi, ai să ai să mă asculți cu mine, ai să ai mulți bani în viața ta. Eu îți fac documentele și pleci pe stihotare. I-am întrebat unde. El mi-a spus că la Cipru. Cipru trușesc. Și am întrebat și așa să lucrez. El mi-a spus că să lucrez numai la consultație asta, că să stau cu persoanele la masă, să beau un ceai, ori o cafea, ori un pahar de șampanie și atât. El ne-a luat pașaportul și mi-a spus că să ne dai pașaportul atunci când să ne apară viza. Mine nici m-a luat un om. M-a dus. M-a dus că e cazinou acolo. Și el m-a întrebat, tu știi la CV? Eu am spus că da. Dar el a avut în vedere că eu vin la prostituație. Și ne-a spus că tu trebuie să ai relații cu dânsul. 
Și am spus, dacă nu vreau, spus că asta nu, că vrei, nu vrei, asta trebuie să faci. M-am mai ținut vreo două zile, tot așa mi-a dat clienți, câte șase, șapte, cinci, depinde. După asta, <coughs> i-am început a bușii. Ei nu înțeles asta. Ei tot îmi dădeau clienți și spuneau că eu am dorg mari, am bani foarte mari că se plătesc pentru dâns. Pentru că, precum că ne-a făcut viza, pașaportul, biletele ne-au dat, tot astea din bani. Dorina is one of the luckier victims of international sex slavery. She is now receiving intensive counseling for her ordeal from a team of specialist volunteers. But many thousands like her get no help at all. In a small office in Chisinau, volunteers from La Strada, an international anti-trafficking NGO, run a hotline for women tricked, like Darina, into sexual slavery abroad. We have around 28 cases that we are working on. We receive calls mostly from relatives. They might say that my daughter called me yesterday on the night and she was uh, crying and um, she asked me that I help her. So this is what we, I don't know, do it on a, on a daily basis if you want. The most common ploy used by Moldovan traffickers is to place a bogus job advert in the local newspaper, Makla. La Strada's team monitors each edition. This is very interesting proposals from a young uh, woman work from, for dancing in Japan, Thailand, Italy. It's very suspicious uh, because uh, they give home to, to the girl uh, they uh, pay ticket. Um, the salary is uh, two thousand dollars. Very big. Uh... To uncover how the scam works, one of our undercover team responded to one of these adverts. Hello. Bună, Olga. Da, bună, bună. Ce faci? Da, uite, sunt la antrenament acum. Ești la antrenament? Da, da, da. Această femeie care este din Moldova. Uh, și a lucrat într-un club de noapte în uh, Damasc, Siria, caută acum, este în Moldova și caută acum fete din Moldova, dansatoare și mai departe. Dar ea caută 40 de fete, în jur de 40 de fete. Um, foarte mult. Mă numesc The advertiser who calls herself Olga quickly offers our undercover investigator a job interview. Bine. But instead of meeting in an office during business hours, she wants to meet on a street corner at nine o'clock at night. This should make the person suspicious. If you are to seek employment in Moldova, you will probably never meet with a future employer or even a, an agency that is intermediating uh, employment. You will never meet on the street. Olga takes our undercover investigator to a noisy bar very quickly. She begins her sales pitch. Anna Ravenko has seen this many times and seen exactly what happens to those who fall for a trafficker's pitch. Mm. The traffickers uh, actually use violence, it's psychology and emotions. From the very beginning until the very end, they play with that. They use their own fears or hopes to chain the person. Moldovan recruiters typically sell them first to local brothels, where they are first forced into sex slavery, then trafficked abroad. 
we sent another undercover journalist into two of these clubs to uncover the next stage in the trail. Posing as the owner of a string of brothels in Europe, he was quickly introduced to sex traffickers. This man boasted he could provide up to 50 women over a two-month period and said he was already working with brothel owners throughout Europe. The next day, our undercover journalist was introduced to a second trafficker in a park in the center of Kijinau. Um, I say to them, uh, give me 50 uh, euro, I'm, and uh, I will find for you a uh, girl. He was happy to explain how he would ship his cargo of sex slaves into the European Union via neighboring countries. Bulgaria, Bulgaria yeah, if you get visa there, you can go outside. To Poland. Poland, Poland, they don't have a road. Uh, they can go there by a bus or by, by flight. These two pimps are small players in the sex trafficking industry. To track down one of the kingpins, we have come to a shabby prison in the remote north of Moldova. For nearly 10 years, Alexander Kovali, known as Shalun, trafficked sex slaves out of Moldova and across Europe from his clubs in Chisinau. El a vândut victime și în Turcia, și în Rusia, și în uh, Israel. Adică, în principiu, în toată Europa au fost vândute victime de către acest șalun, care ulterior, inițial, erau exploatate în Republica Moldova, erau pregătite, instruite, subordonate deja și ulterior vândute în străinătate. Este foarte violent cu victimele sale, cele care nu se supuneau, erau ca sanc sancționate sub formă de tunsoare, erau tunsă chel, da? Uh, erau amenințate, șantajate, bătute, violate, erau deținute în uh, subsol, cele. Cavalli was convicted of sex trafficking in 2007, but he still protests his innocence. Также нет доказательств абсолютно, что я занимался сутенерством. Понимаете, можно было бы в этом признаться, но тогда бы судья сказал, приведите клиента. Instead, he says, his sex slaves voluntarily prostituted themselves after finishing work in his clubs. Девушки жили на консумации, а то, что они делали после пяти часов утра после закрытия клуба, это не мое дело, это личная жизнь. Ion Vizdoga, who worked on Kavali's case, remembers those women differently. O victimă de-a mea, care a dat declarații împotriva lui, ea deja căuta uh, posibilitatea să se sinucidă. Și două tentative de suicid a avut, pentru care una și-a tăiat gâtul, numai ca să nu de ochii la libertate cu șalun. Ea atâta frică avea de el. Why would she do that? Why would she have done that if she wasn't involved in any of the things that you say your business was not? The главный figurant în meu deal как бы главная потерпевшая пыталась отказаться от своих показаний. Значит, в первую очередь ее задержали постоянно закрытой. Ее не выпускали, она, ну, то есть оказали медицинскую помощь, отправили назад, продолжали давить на нее, чтобы она не отказывалась от своих показаний. И тогда она порезала себе горло. Шалун Ковали was sentenced to 19 years in prison. But his prosecution was a rare success in Moldova's fight against sex trafficking. Astăzi noi al de șalun avem în libertate foarte mulți. Adică cele mai dese cazuri pe banca acuzaților sunt trimiși simpli uh, traficanți de cel mai jos nivel. Moldova has neither the resources nor the infrastructure to stop the trafficking of its women into sex slavery. And to those who try to protect them, the responsibility for policing the trade lies elsewhere. De fapt problema nu este Moldova, de fapt problema este în țările unde sunt exploatate aceste victime. Acolo este problema societății că bărbații exploatează fete, femei neajutorate, femei care sunt nevoite să accepte 
adică aceeași prostituție contra voinței sale, doar pentru a și întreține membrii familiei în Republica Moldova într-o țară foarte săracă. Less than a day's drive away, one country and one city above all positively celebrate the economics of demand for prostitution. In 2000, the Dutch government took the radical step of legalizing prostitution, ostensibly as a means to prevent women being trafficked and forced into the sex industry. Today, there are more than 1,200 prostitution businesses throughout Holland. Amsterdam alone has 300 brothels. Holland believes that it has the best system of dealing with the worst excesses of sexual slavery and nowhere sums that up more than the city of Amsterdam. But look behind the windows and does that proposition really hold up to scrutiny? The Dutch legislators have not lost their mind in prostitution policy, but there is a, a vision behind it. If you try to... Harold van Gelder heads Amsterdam Police's anti-trafficking squad. One of the positive advantages of our policy is that, uh, for instance, a prostitute is n has no fear for the police. It's a legal profession. If you follow the rules, you, the police won't bother you. And I understand that we only see the tip of the iceberg, but at least it's a percentage of the branch which we can control. They rent... But with only seven detectives out of a city police force of 6,000 officers, just how much does Harold van Gelder's team actually see? let alone control. Is it possible to say the percentage of women in the sex industry here in Amsterdam who have been trafficked? No, it's not possible. It's... Uh, at, we not don't even an even, estimation? Is no, it? no, I don't... I, I can't give you that. Because at least we don't even know how much, how much prostitutes are working in Amsterdam. Because uh, we are not registrating the prostitutes. Why should the police register them? because we don't register all the butchers or the bakers in Amsterdam. Yet just a few miles across the city, Holland's National Trafficking Reporting Organization has a very clear idea of the numbers of women forced into the country's legalized prostitution industry. If we look at uh, figures from last year, um, we had about a thousand registered um, victims of human trafficking. Um, about 80% is um, sex industry. And there's little doubt why so many trafficking victims end up as sex slaves here. Holland is famous for its um, red light districts. There is a demand for young girls into prostitution. And so I think traffickers make use of our system of um, legalized prostitution to bring them in. Holland is the best to get them into Europe. Prostitution earns Holland 660 million euros every year. Four million tourists flock to Amsterdam, most to stare at and often patronize the prostitutes working in its neon-lit windows. You have a lot of families here. Yeah, with children, children. Lots of women, families, Pictures. groups together. Yeah. If we have a girl here mm -hmm. who shares to me, I'm a victim of human trafficking. Tosh Himskirk has worked for 16 years with the women working in the windows of Amsterdam's red light district. If you walk here, you even think and you want to believe yeah. they like the things what they are doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But uh, the story behind them is so different than what you see. Each street, she says, is organized by nationality. There are certain streets where you have the South American transsexuals. Then there's another street where the majority are uh, Hungarian girls. And then here you have the Spanish-speaking uh, girls. And how have things changed in the sex industry in Holland from, say, 15, 20 years ago to now? Because of the European Union. Whenever we open up in the Netherlands for countries like Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, I mean, we see this whole change. At the moment, the majority of the women are Eastern Europe. We got girls from Albania. I mean, how can a girl from Albania, out of a village I don't know where from, know her way to Amsterdam, know where to live, know how to rent a window? There must be an organized crime behind it. This is the true face of Holland's experiment in legalized prostitution. And this is the face of the man who trafficked her here and beat her to ensure she worked as his sex slave.
Over a two-year period, Shaban Baran, the leader of a Turkish organized crime gang, trafficked more than 130 women, mostly from Eastern Europe, to Holland's red light districts. Each woman was tattooed with his gang's brand. Each was forced to service 20 clients a day. They behaved in a very brutal way because we have seen cases of uh, forced uh, abortion. We've seen cases of uh, forced tattoos with the names of the pimps on the girls. Some girls were uh, beaten up and uh, to uh, hide the bruises they were put in cold water and they were beaten up in a terrible way. For Dutch prosecutors, the Baran case was a warning that the Dutch experiment in legalizing prostitution had worsened, not solved, the problem of international sex slavery. Yeah, we thought in 2000 that the more liberal view to prostitution um, would stamp out uh, trafficking, but that uh, proved to be wrong. 60 to 70 percent of the women uh, in this case, we're being forced to work in legalized prostitution scenes. It is modern slavery. Trafficking human beings is a kind of modern slavery. 5,000 miles away in America, the man who once led the global fight against slavery has long argued that Holland is the cause of, not the solution to, international sex trafficking. I think all that's happened is the Dutch government has become the super pimp. For four years, John Miller was the U.S. State Department's anti-slavery worldwide ambassador. Today, he sees the history of slavery repeating itself. The Dutch believe that they're being very sophisticated and regulating. The interesting thing is this is the exact same approach they took back in the 17th century. The Dutch used to boast about how they had the healthiest slave ships. They had the best ventilation. They had the best rations. They had the best mattresses for the slaves. They provided doctors. <laughs> but slavery went on and on. All their talk about regulation was an excuse to avoid abolition. Every year, the U.S. government publishes a report which judges every country in the world on its efforts to stamp out slavery. The Trafficking in Persons, or TIP, report ranks countries that do the most as Tier 1. The State Department has always given Tier 1 status to Holland, despite the vehement opposition of John Miller. I have visited the red light districts. I've seen the young men with the leather jackets standing outside those windows, counting who goes in and making sure they get all the profits. All I can say is, I didn't think, according to our law, that they were tier one. Giving such favored status to rich Western countries which fuel demand for sex slaves angers impoverished source countries like Moldova, not least because its lowly ranking has put it in danger of economic sanctions from Washington. Very often we see that economically strong countries are always making good, although these are exactly the countries where our citizens are exploited. These are the countries that failed to ensure uh, protections. These are the countries that impose those double standards. The fate of the two convicted sex traffickers highlights those double standards. Alexandra Kovali will spend the next 19 years locked in a Moldovan prison. Shaban Baran is back home in Turkey and free. The Dutch government allowed him out of jail for one day. He absconded and never returned. Until the rich Western countries address the demand for prostitution rather than profit from it, there will always be men like Kovali and Baran and there will always be sex slaves behind these windows. In the next episode of Slavery, a 21st century evil, entire families of slaves trapped in the brick kilns of Pakistan and the slave master who keeps them there.